This market might seem normal enough, but to ordinary Zimbabweans, it's a godsend. After years of shortages, the fact that there's food here at all is a sign the country's devastated economy is finally moving once again. It's the result of the Unity Government's very first decision, scrapping Zimbabwe's worthless currency and instead paying people with money that's actually worth something, the US dollar. Sometime in March we started paying them their January salaries and we paid them $30. This made a huge difference to them. You could see it, that the $30 now gave them an appreciable basket of, of foodstuffs. Yeah, how often are the people coming out here? Brian James is the mayor of Matari, the country's third largest city. Matari Council has been struggling to pay its employees and provide basic services such as rubbish collection and road repairs. But volunteers have leapt in to fill the gap. We are digging this wall so that we can put all the rubbish tins and bottles in this. Because too much dirt in this area. So we are, co we are cleaning the wall area. The cleanup has been crucial in stopping cholera and other diseases which had been spreading across Zimbabwe. <laughs> On the surface, Zimbabwe is making a promising new start. But this is still a deeply troubled and divided country. At this rural rally near the Mozambique border, supporters of the movement for democratic change are singing the praises of its leader, Morgan Changarai. Six months ago, the Movement for Democratic Change, or MDC, entered an uneasy power-sharing arrangement with its long-time foe, Robert Mugabe. Today, MDC politician Giles Matsekwa is trying to explain who's actually running the country. Nothing. Just last year, on this very spot, opposition supporters were being tortured by security forces trying to sway the election outcome. Today, in a show of defiance, supporters cooking lunch for the crowd symbolically slay the nation's octogenarian president, Robert Mugabe. <laughs> but Robert Mugabe is very much alive and kicking. In fact, despite the formation of the unity government, Mugabe's control over the state remains unbroken. He commands the security forces, the legal system and the media. So the MDC is forced to hold hundreds of rallies like this one. It's because this is our only form of communication which is left open to ourselves. As you are aware, the media is not freed yet. Charles Matsekwa is now one of Zimbabwe's two home affairs ministers. The unity deal means there are dual ministers in almost all of the key posts. One from the MDC and one from Mugabe's ZANU-PF party. While publicly Matsekwa is keen to talk up the MDC's power, away from the crowd he admits it's a difficult way to run a country. Well, as I said, um, you know, we these are two personalities coming from two political parties with completely two different ideologies. That's the first thing. Um, and uh, you now have got to combine these two ideologies for the benefit of the ministry. 
And that's not an easy task. How difficult is it for you personally to have to swallow your pride to deal with ZANU-PF? For the sake of Zimbabweans, I, I am very prepared to swallow pride to save the Zimbabweans. Is that what it's come down to? It is, that is what it's come down to. The awkward power-sharing arrangement was brokered by African diplomats hoping to end a conflict that had seen hundreds of Mugabe's opponents killed and thousands more injured. When Dateline visited Zimbabwe last year, we found two MDC supporters who had been attacked by ZANU-PF thugs and set on fire. Hey, are you in pain? Neither Kudakwashi Sameli or his friend were expected to live. Their two colleagues were already dead. I was not expecting such a thing to say in my ear. Incredibly, Somali survived, but he scarred for life. His friend also survived, and recently they returned home to where the attack took place. They now must live among those who did this. Sameli can forgive his attackers for what happened to him, but not to his friends. And you had to sign your, your name again. Lynn Evans is a former farmer who remembers the recent years of economic madness. That was the biggest note ever, was the 100 trillion. Then we lost more notes from the 100 trillion, and these were the last some dollars ever. When we last saw her, Evans was trying to reclaim her property from farm invaders. Despite being armed with a High Court ruling in her favour, Evans was chased away and a year and a half later, she still hasn't been able to return. Okay, it's me. Let's go. Go, go, go. Go, 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 I'm worried about Chris. But property rights, just full stop. I mean, isn't that just, it's a basic right. So surely those things do, it absolutely does need to be resolved. How does anyone come and invest and have any degree of confidence with that behind everything? So that's got to be resolved. Evan still hopes to get her farm back one day, but for now she's living in Matari and looking for work. She believes the unity government represents the first sign of hope in a decade. I think it's been a hugely frustrating time and we all want to move forward and it's slower than we thought and we're suddenly realising what a long haul it is. But I, but I do think that there's hope. If I didn't, I don't think I'd still be here. It's not just restitution for past farm invasions that's an ongoing problem. Prime Minister Morgan Changarai has attempted to downplay the farm invasions, but they are still taking place. We're on our way now to a farm that's been the centre of a legal challenge that's been going on for years. And, yeah, you can see some of the mango trees in the distance over there. This is Ben Freef, and from his pergola, he can see out across his fields where he no longer dares to walk. The invaders who've claimed his farm are camped within eyesight. Yeah, it's about one and a half kilometres away. You can see the barns there. That's, that's kind of where they all are. You know, but it's only a handful of people. Um, but unfortunately, they've all got guns and they, they're violent people. 
Despite winning countless legal battles to keep his farm, all he has left is his house. OK, you carry that and we're going to make a bit of salad. Even though Ben has 150 workers and their families on his farm, it's no deterrent. They too have been targeted and are living in fear of the regular attacks. They haven't hassled us here at, at our home for the last few weeks. You know, it's normally at night that they come, um, but sometimes they come in the day as well. Just a few weeks before my visit, they were back again. Freeth shows me the spot where the invaders broke in. Once they were in the house, um, various of them went up to the children's room, um, were taunting them with, with noises of, of hyenas. Um, they were threatening to rape my wife. Last year, the invaders almost killed him and his elderly parents-in-law in a horrific attack. So they fractured my skull. Um, they beat my father-in-law so badly that seven bones in his body were broken and he's a 75-year-old man. They beat my mother-in-law up really badly. They broke bones in, in, in her arm so that she can't actually lift that arm any longer. Ben Freeth says that for the sake of his farm workers, he won't be scared off. But he has deep concerns about the unity government, and like many, he was unimpressed by Morgan Changarai's recent world tour. In his meetings with leaders such as British Prime Minister Gordon Brown, Changarai stands accused of downplaying the situation in Zimbabwe to try to attract foreign funds. So I want to assure you that we are on the process of an irreversible process towards consolidating the democratic values. I am conscious. And Jesus said, the truth will set you free. And, and at the moment, Morgan Changarai does not seem to be able or willing uh, to actually face the truth and then deal with it. You're very disappointed in him? Absolutely. Uh, you know, I think everyone is very disappointed at this stage. I mean, all our workers are incredibly disappointed because they are doing nothing to bring the rule of law back into this country at this time. I honestly believe that, that the Prime Minister is doing his best under very, very difficult circumstances to avoid chaos and to avoid a total uh, a Somalia-type situation taking place in Zimbabwe. Roy Bennett is an MDC politician who's well aware of the problems Morgan Changarai faces in trying to govern. Bennett himself is facing dubious terrorism charges. This morning he's meeting his party colleague, Mayor Brian James, ahead of yet another court appearance. Some say there could be an indictment where they put me straight back into side again and then reapply re for bail again, so I don't know, we'll have to see. The MDC had wanted to appoint him to the critical post of Deputy Agriculture Minister. But on the day he was meant to be sworn in, Bennett was arrested and jailed. Deputy Minister's fully bought her. Yeah. It's fully in their pocket. Bennett believes Mugabe is using the courts to whittle away the MDC's parliamentary majority. Since the power-sharing agreement, five MDC MPs have been convicted of various crimes and 14 others face charges ranging from rape to corruption. The Zona PF have continued to show the intransigence and total lack of commitment to this deal by harassment and arrest of opposition, or the, 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 we are now the ruling party, if you want to look at Parliament. And it's very possible that any member of, of, of our side of things can be picked up and locked away at any time under under total frivolous charges. With frustration growing, some MDC members are starting to question whether the unity government is still worth pursuing. You know, we've gone along with them for how long now? And to what avail? We've no further down the road than when we started. And if anything, they're entrenching themselves more and more. You know. Bennett will soon find out whether he's going to be sent back to jail. It's a gruesome prospect after his initial arrest, Bennett was detained for more than a month and forced to share a cell with the bodies of five dead men who were left uncollected for days. As Roy Bennett heads into court to learn his fate, another man is being freed. 
Mike Hitchman does not belong to any political party. But three and a half years ago, this former policeman was arrested and accused of plotting to kill Robert Mugabe. Hitchman maintains the accusations were completely false. But his appeal was never heard, and his lawyer, Trust Manda, is thrilled just to see him come out alive. I feel good that he's out. Uh, we didn't think that he'll be out uh, um, perpendicular. We thought he was coming out horizontal, but he, he, come out, he came out alive. <laughs> I'm admiring the new breakfast. Jimmy, will you have a cup of tea? I meet up with Hitchman, his wife Beatrice, and his son Philip at home. I haven't done this for 14 months, but I like a warm cup. <laughs> I've been drinking tea out of a plastic lunchbox for 40, well, not for 40 months. I couldn't drink tea in it yeah. <laughs> the last few months. I mean, it must be pretty amazing to have your dad back. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's weird, though. <laughs> it's going to take some getting used to again. <laughs> but yeah, how, how old were you when you went away? 17 and a half. In the prison, though, I've seen something that I've never seen outside, and that's people reduced to beyond the state of animals. I've had young people, much younger than I, in the cell, dying over a period of two weeks, simply from diarrhea. And in the 21st century, to have someone dying of diarrhea is ridiculous. And eventually, the guy died in agony in the cell. Hitchman himself was tortured to extract confessions. I was thrown against the desk, so because of the leg irons, I stumbled forward, so I was, I was leaning over the, the desk. Then I was kicked twice in the testicles. And then after that, uh, within some seconds, they pulled on my pants, my underpants, then they burnt me with cigarettes. But I passed out very quickly after that started. When he came to, he was forced to write five separate confessions, ranging from plotting to kill President Mugabe to bombing his hometown. One of the confessions included me working with them from within ZANAPF to topple the older crew of ZANAPF. That one never saw the light of day. There was a variety of confessions. And then they sort of picked decided to pick and choose which confession they would use. And now he's heard the state wants to call him as a witness in the case against Roy Bennett. I've heard that um, Roy is being charged with exactly the same charge that I was charged with. It's possession of firearms with the intention to carry out acts of banditry, terrorism, etc. Roy never possessed anything. Back at the courthouse, Roy Bennett re-emerges, still a free man. But Mugabe's cat and mouse game continues. Bennett's case has been adjourned until October. He still can't take up his position as a deputy minister. And it turns out a relative of Robert Mugabe has just been appointed as his prosecutor. Do you think you could end up being sent to jail? Most definitely. I think... Um... That's more than likely exactly what's going to happen. So it's political, it's a, it's a direct attack on, on me um, uh, as an opposition uh, minister-designate for not wanting me to go into that ministry. And, yeah, it's, there is no rule of law. Um, the Attorney General has publicly declared himself uh, proudly as an IPF. The Minister of Justice uh, is the Minister of Unjustice. All over the country, people are still feeling the after-effects of the years of terror imposed by Mugabe. Betty and Lovemore Shori Shori attending the grave of their son, Timothy. The 26-year-old dared to support Morgan Changarai, and last year a small group of Zanu PF thugs came to their house in the middle of the night and attacked them. Their son might have survived if they'd been able to get medical help. 
put it here and a little penny, which quack was in a side day in the now MP would do a good dim tower, good anti tore, good anti rapisim one of town. Zazi sky to Jens can among two at Tinoko Raya. I did put him on him chain, they could go canoe to Mutaur now. Two weeks after the attack, Timothy died from his injuries. The young men who killed him still live nearby. Amazingly, Betty says her faith has allowed her to forgive them, even though they've shown no remorse. Ini indaka indaka nganda tore gerera saka pakutanga wengu tora kuti hati chawe ya chawe ya shingadi kushizira ndika nguta asune ika na maru kundura ya marindi ya nozia. Tishungoti moroi. Kaskuti wa ndi tauri kuti ndaka kuti azira ya wasati. Asiku wa moro sa wano nguti yeo makadi ni ndoti makadi. Tichito seka na wo. But not everyone is so forgiving and bridging the country's deep division is going to be critical for Zimbabwe's future. The first step is to draft a new constitution to lay the groundwork for fresh elections. Constitutional talks have already begun, with delegates coming from all over the country. But the first day of talks collapsed amid scuffles and heated accusations. No one to subvert the process by submitting propaganda, lies, that Zanupi has manipulated this situation is unfortunate. There are real fears that the longer this process takes, the more likely it will become hopelessly derailed. And Zimbabwe's current calm will turn out to be nothing more than a brief lull between the storms. You know, I think when the transitional government uh, took place, this country was on the brink of chaos, it's slowly getting back to that status again, whereby the ruling party um, are absolutely determined to pull this country down and pull it into chaos to protect uh, what they've stolen and to protect uh, those who've committed crimes against humanity on their behalf to remain in power.